What's going on guys, Huddled here, and today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the new Glorious Ice Pad. And um, this is a fairly new pad from Glorious. It came out like a week or like two weeks ago about. I just got mine this week. I've been using it for like the past four or five days now. And it's a very interesting pad. Uh, it comes in at about $35, which puts it at a fairly, you know, good price. But after shipping, you know, it's about like $45, I think. So you got to take into account that you can only buy it from the Glorious website and you do have to pay for shipping. It's about 5 or $10. I can't remember exactly. So that definitely adds, you know, a fair amount of price to the cost. And the main competitor for this pad, I guess, is the Sheeting Kai, since it has a similar glass coating to the Sheeting Kai. But personally, I feel that the ice pad is um, not as good as the Sheeting Kai, despite the fact that the Sheeting Kai does wear out a bit. The ice pad kind of has the same problem. The area where I use it the most, the center, is certainly a lot slower. And I'm just going to go, the main issues I've had with this pad so far have been the rubber backing. Like, I can, you know, move it so much on my desk with just my hand sliding it around. It's pretty, like, terrible. I never had, like, this issue at all with, like, any other pad even. Um, artisan pads are amazing with their rubber backing, but Glorious is like not good at all. And the thing is, when you push on the stitch edges the most, it's like when the pad moves around. But I'm not even like putting my finger under the stitch edge at all. It's just sliding all over the place with just one finger, which is pretty bad. Like I have a wooden desk too. I imagine most people would have like a similar desk to mine. Like when I'm aiming too, I like to push down on the pad with like the back of my palm or like claw grip, and you can see like even just sliding my hand around. It just moves and like one thing i also do is like i touch the base of the pad with like my uh ring and pinky finger um to get added like stopping power for like micro adjustments and you know it doesn't help with the fact that the rubber backing on this pad is not good at all and so the quality of it, it you know it feels like a pretty decent product for 35 dollars but once again it is like 45 or so after shipping um stitch edges are another issue that i've had with the pad is that i like to rest my arm and my wrist on the pad as you can see like right here um when i'm like aiming like this i'm like rubbing my uh forearm up and down the stitch edges and it just feels like i'm giving myself like carpet burn or rope burn going on the pad like that it's not a very comfortable feeling so i definitely recommend if you do end up buying this pad make sure you get an arm sleeve it's going to make the experience a lot more enjoyable but i don't have one here with me right now um i'll probably end up buying one though um, and then the other issue is the vertical, uh, the vertical Y axis on this pad is so much slower than the X axis, which is like super annoying. And, um, it's definitely noticeable. Like you have to push harder with your fingers going up than you do to move it to the side with like your wrist. Um, at first, like you'll take it out of the box and it'll feel fine. But after using it for a little bit, it'll just like start to feel worse. I don't know like what it is, but sometimes like the pad feels so much muddier, but, and then other times, you know, you'll wake up and it's like so much faster. It's like, it's been one of the most inconsistent pads I've used so far. And for something that was like hyped up to be the Shiden Kai killer, the Shiden Kai is like consistently good. And then it, once it starts wearing out, it's still like a decent pad, like a worn Shiden Kai isn't bad. And I mean, if worst case scenario with a Shiden Kai, you know, you just rip off the coating and then you have an artisan he But with this, I don't know, like the areas that you use the most, like seem to like smooth out and slow down more. I don't know if that's like a good thing or a bad thing, but I like it when it's like it's at its fastest state. It's like fun to use, but the rubber backing has pretty much made it almost unusable for me for like long play sessions because you know I'll play for like five, ten minutes, then I gotta like completely readjust the pad on my desk. It's just like annoying. Like I shouldn't have to do that with a mouse pad. Um so one thing that I hope that they do in the next batch, because it is out of stock right now, you're not gonna be able to buy one for probably until 2021, they are saying like January. So definitely they should work on like uh, basically making the rubber backing like a lot better. Um, another thing that they need to do is work on the stitch edges so that they're more flush with the mouse pad because you can see like they pop out like an extra like half a millimeter probably. And that's what's mostly causing like the effect on my wrist and stuff where it's like, you know, feels like carpet burn on your wrist. It's not the most comfortable feeling. Um, but once again, you can fix that by using an arm sleeve and it should feel quite a bit better. Um, it, the pad itself, uh, it feels like a fair bit different than the sheeting Kai. You know, it's, it's similar. Um, you can't feel the glass beads at all that. You can feel that a little bit on the sheeting Kai, but, uh, this pad kind of feels like a laminated piece of paper. I don't know. It just feels like it has like a laminated surface and the glass beads are under it. Kind of like a gimmick with like the, you know, glass beads. But when you do take a picture of it with flash, um, 
it does look pretty crazy you know like the black sheet in kai wood it's like glows because of all the glass particles um but the, the main thing is like the rubber backing like you can just see like when i'm just like brushing my hand over the pad it just looks terrible um another thing is that fingerprints are going to show up like massively you can see if i press my hand down on the pad you can basically see my whole hand print i don't know if the lighting is not the best right here but if my hand's like sweatier from like holding a mouse or something you can see just like the trails that my hand leaves right there and um overall um it's like a decent mouse pad but i think that there are better hard pad uh options out there i don't think it's worth buying like a hybrid pad like this i think if you want a hard pad what you should look at is um you know the glorious helios isn't that bad uh they re-released it under the air name but honestly i'd rather that they have kept the previous one because um the, the original Helios was a bit larger. Um, this one it does come in a fair bit smaller than like an Artisan XL. And I prefer to have my pad like as large as possible. Um, like the Artisan XL, I made sure like on my desk that it fits like perfectly right here. And it works, just works best for my setup. And um, as you can see, like I'll do a quick glide test, you know, with my school mini. Right now it's like pretty fast. But one thing that I actually did right before this review is what I put the mouse pad in the freezer for like two minutes and it made the pad feel so much better. And the rubber backing also felt so much better, but it only lasted like five minutes before the rubber backing was back to being terrible. But the pad does still feel a bit quicker. So one thing that me and Borgesy have like theorized is that the pad seems to be like affected by temperature almost. It's weird, like when it, the pad is like a lot colder, like in the morning when I wake up, it does feel a fair bit faster. But as the day goes on, you know, it gets warmer outside, it just feels worse. And then as I'm going to bed and like it gets colder again, I don't know like if you have like your room temperature regulated a bit more i don't know i think that might help i am in a more humid environment you know the humidity here is usually around like 70 to 90 depending on the day um east coast united states but i don't know i just don't see this pad as being worth it in its current state if they improve the rubber backing and you know get better stitched edges and better qc control like if they fix the vertical um difference like that's the main issue because when you, you move the mouse in circles like this as Borgie was saying in his review you can really feel that when you're going up like that it just feels like there's so much more resistance on the mouse like, it doesn't feel right like something feels off right away when you start using this pad i'm not sure if i had like a bad coffee but i mean Borgie was having the same issues um definitely like wait for the second batch of this pad um don't go and buy one like on mouse market or something like wait for them to improve the issues with this pad and then i think it'll it might end up being worth it if they can also get free shipping like i don't know it just kind of ruins the price it's supposed to be a more budget-friendly mouse pad if it's like 45 dollars after shipping and tax when you can go on the artist website and you know buy like a large sheeting high which is like a similar size for you know 50 dollars um but overall it's not it's not a bad pad by any means but there are some issues that i have with it and um, that's pretty much my final thoughts on the ice pad. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. It's kind of like a free form talking video. You know, I don't have a crazy editing B-roll or anything like that. I do want to get like a nice camera though. I'm recording uh, all these reviews, you know, with just a webcam. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my final thoughts on the ice pad. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. And uh, if you have any feedbacks on uh, any further videos, just leave it in the comments and I'll try to get back to you guys. Thanks for watching.